Hello, Ladislas Maurice from The Wandering Investor here. Today, I'll be talking about real estate in Oman. So just make sure that you read the full article. This is just a little summary. Uh, the full article is on my website with all the information you need. Make sure to click the link below to go through all the detailed information. So we're going to be discussing quickly a bit of background on Oman, the economy on Oman, the real estate market here, the different developments you can invest in in the country, and then why I think that investing in real estate in Oman is more of a residency and lifestyle play. So first thing to know is that Oman is a tiny country of about 4 million people. It's close to the United Arab Emirates. No one really hears about it too much, but it's a lovely little country. Up until the 70s, it was essentially just a subsistence economy based on farming and fisheries. Um, not much was happening. And then Sultan Qaboos bin Said took over the country and really developed it. Um, so it's really the case of Sultan taking power, using all the money from oil and actually helping his people. So unlike some other countries where if someone takes power and uses all the all the all the oil for himself, um, like you can see in many African countries. In this particular case here in Oman, the Sultan really developed the country, built infrastructure, spent on education, healthcare, etc. So the result is that Oman is an upper middle income country. You go around, there's nothing poor about the place. It's it's very developed. The now the the, the challenge is that about 40% of GDP is based on industry but 68 to 85 percent of government revenue is based on oil and gas depending on the price fluctuations so that the economy is is quite dependent on these commodities so when the price of oil was high it was fantastic and then in 2014 the price of oil started going down and this had a major impact on the country's finances the debt to gdp ratio jumped from 15% in 2015 to 80% in 2020. So, which is a bit of a cause for worry. It was driven by, by large fiscal deficits. It's put the Omani real to US dollar peg under pressure, but the government and the central bank have said that they will defend the peg. So it's definitely something that you should be aware of when making an investment in Oman. There is a fiscal and, and debt issue. That said, the Sultan, so His Majesty Sultan Qaboos bin Said passed away in early 2020 and a new Sultan was nominated, Sultan Hattam bin Tariq. Um, so the transition went very smoothly, no issues whatsoever. And he really understands the predicament that the country is finding itself in. So he's pushing through a lot of reforms. So it's not a case of a, um, you can see this in the Arab world sometimes, where you know, someone takes power and then just doesn't, really, doesn't want to face the facts. Um, he's facing the facts and he's acting on them. So the first thing he's done is he's cutting the government budget by 15% in 2021. So this is the sort of action that is really required in face of, of the fiscal deficit, uh, but that would be impossible in your typical European democracy. People wouldn't accept it and politicians wouldn't want to do it because they know they wouldn't get elected later on. So this is a case of, of tough love. He's doing what is not popular, but it's right for the country. He's also implementing a VAT of 5%, which will be implemented within, I think, a month or two in, in 2021. Also not particularly popular, but it's needed to raise government revenue and for government revenue to not be that dependent on the oil and gas sector. Also from 2022, he's gonna put in place an income tax for higher earners. Thirdly, he's made it a lot friendlier for foreign investors. Before, apart from a few free trade zones around the country, it wasn't possible for a non-Omani to come here, create a business and own 100% of it. He had to get a local partner, which you know was expensive and bureaucratic and, and led to issues if you didn't get along well with your, with your partner. So he's removed this barrier 
with regards to a few industries that people can invest in, IT, I think healthcare, a few other ones as well. Fourthly, he's pushing a drive for omanization. So what does omanization mean? It means giving jobs to Omanis in priority. Approximately 80 to 90% of Omanis are employed in the public sector, which is hardly sustainable, objectively. And most of the private sector employs expats, a lot of them from South Asia, Southeast Asia, a few Europeans as well. So his goal is to encourage Omanis to join the private sector and to reduce the country's dependence on expatriates. So this is good on multiple levels. One, it means that skills are going to be built. Like Omanis will have to do jobs they weren't doing before, so they're going to have to learn. Um, two, the government will spend less money on salaries. Three, the money that Omanis are going to be earning in the private sector is money that is most likely going to stay in Oman. So as opposed to paying an Indian expatriate to do a job, who then saves 30 to 40 percent of his income to send back to India for, for his family, this money is going to remain in Oman, circulate in Oman, and, and help the economy grow. Um, so it's quite controversial. A lot of expats are not happy, but the reality is it's what the country needs. Um, so it'll be a bit tough from a transition point of view in terms of passing on skills but it's going to be done, they're going to make it, and there's, there's no way around it. So just last week he announced that people, for example, in administrative positions and in sales positions, I think, in car dealerships, will need to be Omani and not expatriates. And every few weeks there are new jobs that appear on the Omanization list. The result of this and of the whole COVID situation is that 300,000 expatriates have left Oman in 2020, which is a massive number. The, the population of Oman is 4 million people. So take out 300,000 expatriates, even though Omanis themselves have great demographics, they have over three children per, per woman, the people are leaving the country. Um, so it's creating a bit of an issue in terms of the rental market. Now we're going to talk about the real estate market here. So it's a bit of a two-tier system market in Oman. Uh, on the one hand, you have Omanis who can buy anywhere in the country and who predominantly own their property. They tend to buy. And then all the expatriates who tend to rent, but they are allowed to buy in a few developments that are called integrated tourism complexes. There are a few of them around the country. And essentially you can, as a foreigner, you can own a property and it gives you residency rights for you and your family. Now, typically I'm a very wary of two tier real estate markets because it means that foreigners usually end up overpaying for property. In this particular case, it's a bit different in the sense that Omanis are also investing in these integrated tourism complexes and also living in them. So though they're more expensive, they see the value in the extra amenities and luxury that is inherent in these, in these developments. So it's, it's quite important to, to, to understand this. Prices and rental rates have dropped about 30% since 2014. I don't see any catalysts for growth in the near to medium term. So sure, if the price of oil shoots back up, um, probably prices will go up. But you know, if you want to bet on that, just buy some oil stocks. So I wouldn't necessarily buy in Oman just as a pure investment unless you live here and it's easy for you to manage. But I see it more as a, as a residency and lifestyle play. And so we'll discuss this a bit later in the video. But in terms of the developments that are available, I'll just discuss four of them around Muscat. Why Muscat? Because it's the capital city. It has a great airport and very good airline connections to Europe, the Middle East, Asia, and Africa as well. So it's, it's a very good hub. You can also buy in other parts of the country, but then you have to deal with regional airports, etc., which is kind of, it's not the, the point of being in the Middle East is being connected to everywhere else. Now, 
In Muscat, there are four main integrated tourism complexes. The first one, the main one, is called Al Muj, which means the wave in Arabic. It's located right next to the airport, literally a five minute drive from the airport. It's the most liquid, it's in many ways the most luxurious, it's easy to find tenants. If you need to sell, you can sell it pretty quickly at the right price. So it's, it's a pretty healthy market. People like to live there. There's a nice marina, there's a beach, there's a Kempinski Hotel. They're building a St. Regis, which will open, I think, in 2022, but now with delays, probably 2023. And there are nice little parks, villas, apartments. Like Al Muj is, if you're gonna buy ice closed in Oman, it would be Al Muj. You can't really go wrong with buying there from a micro point of view. Uh, then you have Muscat Hills, which is also five minutes away from the, from the airport. That one is not on the sea. It's inland, it's got a nice golf, apartments, villas, but it's, it hasn't been doing very well. Prices have gone down more than in other developments. And there's no, the, the value proposition is not as clear. Um, so you end up paying a premium for it compared to other buildings in the area, which isn't 100% justified. So I would be very wary with Muscat Hills, though the, it's a lot, definitely a lot more affordable. If you want entry level in Muscat, it'll be in Muscat Hills. Uh, then there's a new one that is called Muscat Bay. It's approximately half an hour away from the, from the city. It's a luxury development by the sea in a beautiful bay. I do not see the value proposition of this development. It's expensive. I think that if you buy something there, you won't make any money, you'll lose money. And it's hard to find long-term tenants and also short-term tenants. Personally, I would stay away from, from that one. They're supposed to open a big hotel, but it's been delayed. It's, uh, there, there are a few orange slash red flags around this development. And then lastly, there is Jebel Sifa. It's approximately an hour and a half away from Muscat. It's lovely, to be honest with you, up to two years ago, I thought it would be a failed development. And, um, and it just sprung up to life. And now it's quite vibrant. It's very nice. It's the most affordable in Muscat. And what's interesting about this one is that you can, you're allowed to rent short term. So in the other developments, in um, Al Muj at least, you're not allowed to rent the apartment short term. So if you want a residency play, Jebel Sifa is quite interesting because when you want to spend a few months every year in Oman, you can stay in your apartment, you're by the beach, uh, there's some cool bars, nice restaurants, it's super peaceful, little marina, you can have your boat. And then when you go away, you can put a short term market. Um, so it's a good way to you know, at least cover your costs. So this one is definitely worth looking into. Like I said, I don't see investing in real estate in Oman as an investment with clear short to medium term catalysts for growth, but it's a very interesting residency and lifestyle play. So one, from a tax point of view, there are just no taxes, um, no income tax, no capital gains taxes, uh, just no taxes. You don't even fill out a an income tax return there just there's no such a no such thing i'm not even sure you can get a tax certificate i i don't like it's just it's just not a concept so that'll change from 2022 but when it does it probably won't be anything traumatic you know if you need to pay a few few percentage points in taxes so be it from that point of view it's very interesting and then from a lifestyle point of view oman is absolutely lovely and very different from Dubai. Um, so Dubai is flashy in your face. Oman is a lot more conservative, peaceful. And when you live here, you really live with Omanis. Uh, when you're in Dubai, like you can sometimes spend a whole day and you won't really interact with, with any Emiratis. In Oman, most of the population is not expats, it's Omanis, very friendly, very relaxed, uh, very helpful people that mind their own business they just want to live in peace um, they speak english well so it's just when you're here you actually live with the locals and you interact with them speak with them 
So that's very, very pleasant. The country itself is beautiful. Beautiful beaches, mountains, sand dunes, quaint little oasis and wadis. It's a great place to go on road trips, sunshine every day. I mean, this is the everyday weather. It's, it's really a lovely place to spend time. Cars are cheap, gas is cheap, so you can just drive everywhere. The road, the road network is really great. If you have a family, there are quite a few international schools as well. And um, healthcare is, like no one really talks about Oman as a healthcare destination, <laughs> but it's, it's great healthcare. Last month I went to see a specialist, I just called, and I paid $35 to see a specialist that had done all of his studies in the US. $35, I called in the evening and I had an appointment the next day. So try doing this in America, try doing this in Europe. So people like to say in Europe, oh, but you know, we don't have to pay anything, blah, blah. And the, the government takes care of you. Sure, but one, you pay a lot of taxes for this service. And two, when you call, sometimes you need to wait months to see a specialist. Here it's 35 bucks and the next day. And the guy's probably more qualified than the one in Europe. So great healthcare destination. When people ask me who is Oman right for, I would say Oman is great for four categories of people. The first one is young families who want to live in a conservative environment and family-friendly environment. You have all the amenities for children, there are a lot of children everywhere, good schools, peaceful, very safe, and, and good conservative values. Two, retired people, so retired Europeans who don't want to pay too many taxes and who want to live in year-long sunshine and with world-class infrastructure. Because it's easy to, you know, you can go to the Balkans or you know, other countries or Central America or North Africa, etc. And, you know, it's sunshine and great weather, etc. But it's not first world infrastructure. Here in Oman, it's all first world. And the, the healthcare is, like I said, top notch and really affordable. Three, it's a great base for perpetual travelers. So independent businessmen or investors who travel quite a, a lot for work and who need a base in the center of it all. So this is the great thing about Oman, great airport, close to Europe, close to Africa, Middle East, close to Asia, you're, you're in the middle of it all. So it's, it's really a, a great, great base. And fourth, it's uh, for South Asians who want a plan B. Like India is like, what, a two, two, three hour flight away from here. So a lot of Indian nationals have apartments here or villas here in Oman to get residency and to either have their family live here and go to school here or just as a plan B, as a backup plan. If you compare life in chaotic Delhi and, and Mumbai and pollution, etc., and just traffic and chaos, your family can just live here in peace. It's a mere two, three hour flight away, good schools. And when you're South Asian, I mean, there's like all the food you need and everything because most of the expatriates are South Asian. So if you want to find out more about investing in real estate in Oman, like I said, the article. And secondly, check out this next video that I did with Nicole. She's my buyer's agent here in Oman. I've worked with her for a few years. And we go through an, we go through an apartment, we visit an apartment, we show you what it looks like, we give you the price, and then the expected rental yield and the whole breakdown of costs and how much you'll be making in the end. So it's, it's quite an interesting video, so feel free to watch it. And of course, always, make sure to sign up to my private list on thewanderinginvestor.com. It's completely free and you'll receive all the updates. Cheers.